Welcome back to Always Real Talk 2020. I'm Kwame Brown, and look, we've had an exciting night. We've talked about the national election. We talked about the local election. We're back now because numbers are coming in, numbers are pouring in. And I wanted to see if we can get someone who has been doing a lot of political stuff over the last number of years, and that is Tantiana Torres. And she is a part of the Faith Faith 2020 in this election cycle. Uh, but more importantly, she also was the political director for South Florida uh, and the Clinton campaign uh, last campaign cycle. Tantiana, welcome to Always Real Talk. Hey, Kwame, nice to see you. Thank you for having me on this evening. I really appreciate the opportunity. It's awesome. Love what you're doing. I uh, love the communication uh, to the community, to the people, as you always said. So thank you for the opportunity to have me here tonight. A very eventful uh, past couple of months and obviously a very eventful night ahead, I think. Uh, I think it's a still a very early night for a lot of us. But yes, thank you for having me and I can't wait to our conversation tonight. Hey, awesome, awesome, awesome. Look, I want to jump right into it. You know, you were the political director in South Florida uh, in the last election. I know you were down there, you were kicking butt. I remember you was working your butt <laughs> off. Uh, I know you were disappointed in, in not being victorious overall. Uh, what, what, yeah. what took place in Florida this time? I mean, Florida seems to be, you know, leaning towards Trump now. So we had an incredible team in 2016. I cannot take credit for what happened in Miami-Dade County. Um, and we had a great state director as well. Um, but it has been, it was, it was a labor of love. Uh, we were on the ground. And you know, you win elections when you're on the ground in people's faces, building coalitions, building relationships. And in 16, we did just that. Uh, we hit the ground running. Uh, again, we had a great team of folks that dedicated their, their lives to this, not saying the ones that are, are in this cycle or not, uh, but we were able to be on the ground. And that's a very big difference than what's happened uh, in 2020, obviously because of COVID uh, and all the restrictions around uh, what can be done and, and socially distancing. Um, so what's happening in Florida tonight, uh, I, from what I've been able to look at and see, um, we are underperforming in Miami-Dade County. And I know that some of the local electeds um, and the Democratic ticket are also not doing so well. Um, obviously, Trump has a huge presence um, in, in South in Florida, but in South Florida specifically, because he can speak to a lot of the his message uh, to Latinos around socialism and communism has been very strong, and it resonates when you have Venezuelans and Cubans and some Colombians like me uh, living there, because we've been through regimes that are socialism and communism, and that message really resonated with a lot of the folks down in South Florida. So I'm not surprised that the numbers are doing a little bit, uh, are very different than a couple years ago. Right. Now, you, but, I know you uh, were, you poured your heart and soul in to the Faith 2020. You were really aggressive. You was on the ground. You was given the message about the faith community and how important the faith community uh, could be for the Democratic Party. Most of the time when you talk about the faith community, you think of the Republican Party. And some people don't really tie the two together. And I know one of the things that you focused on along with Faith 2020 and a number of other people were bringing the faith community uh, to the Democratic Party and giving them a different vision, a different look that they haven't seen before. And clearly when we're looking yes. at the map, there's you know competitive races in Georgia, competitive in North Carolina, Texas is, looks like it's blue now. I don't know where it'll be later. Clearly, some of those messages had to resonate. What, tell me a little bit about that. Well, Kwame, I'm a pro-life Democrat, and uh, I also believe in women's rights. So I'm, I'm, I'm both. Um, and I think uh, evangelicals, particularly, which is the faith that I practice, are not monolithic. Uh, in the country, there are 17 million white evangelicals, 12 million black evangelicals, and 5 million Latino evangelicals. And Latino evangelicals are the fastest growing group of faith groups around in the evangelical community to date. Um, and we keep growing. And our faith, uh, and when I mean our, I mean those that are in the bracket between 35 and 45, um, those evangelicals see things a little bit different. We're not as fundamental and legalistic. We're not one issue voters. When we discuss pro-life issues, we don't only focus on abortion. Uh, we focus on other pro-life issues that cannot be ignored, such as access to education, affordable housing, food security, um, immigration reform, obviously, and criminal justice reform. So when you talk about pro-life and you speak about pro-life as a pro-life Democrat um, and as an evangelical person myself, you can't 
only look at one issue. And I think that's changing for this new generation of evangelicals. Um, I think that's happening countrywide. I don't think it's something that's just happening um, in certain states. It's something that's changing. A lot of people um, that got stuck on certain issues around faith, even in the Catholic community as well, are changing. And this is why we worked with Faith 2020 and stood Faith 2020 up at the beginning of the year uh, with a couple of colleagues from different campaigns uh, from this past election cycle. Um, and we stood it up as a you know 501c3 organization because we wanted to reach out to these faith groups that normally the Democratic Party does not have conversations with because they, like you said, look to it as the Republicans have the faith groups. Well, it's not that because I'm a Democrat and I will support Democrats, but I'm also a person of faith. Um, and faith and politics uh, are usually two things apart, but I think that they have a lot more in common and intertwine in different ways. But as a party, we have to explore. There are a lot of evangelicals my age and younger that think that it's okay to vote for Democrats. And I, I don't think we can um, waste that opportunity on that door. So that's why Faith 2020 was created. We did a lot of media buys throughout the country, especially in swing states like Pennsylvania, where I just came back. Um, from uh, a lot of media buys in Ohio and Arizona and in Florida. So I think that um, we are doing really, really great um, around making sure that people are engaged. And these media buys and, and, and these ads, 30 second to 60 second ads, have made a difference. People will resonate with those ads. They see faces and voices that look and sound like them. And I think that we, in the next couple of elections and years, we need to pay attention to that growing group of Latino voters, yes, um, but also faith voters, period, um, in the fastest growing um, group, that's the Latino evangelical and Catholic groups. Well, clearly, look, clearly it seems like Faith 2020 really was on the ground, working hard. You look in this, in this if you look in the South, you look at the areas that had a large faith community that you know, like Georgia and South Carolina and Texas. Yes. I mean, competing in those areas, clearly, and the, the minority community and having a specific reach in the minority community, just not saying your minority vote for us, but there are different segments in that community itself and faith being one. And if you look inside the minority community and you look inside of the faith community, sometimes that's where that split gets a little bit uh, wider between the Democrats and the Republicans and the work that you guys are, have done seems to be paying off. You look tired because I know you just got back from Philly. You was in the car. You was like, I can call you from the car. I said, no, you can call me when you get there. Then I know you're in quarantine because you was out in Corona. And then I thank you for, for coming on, spending some time with us. Uh, you know, once again, it's Tantiana uh, Torres, who was the... Uh, the uh, former political director down in South Florida, worked with Faith 2020. She doesn't like to say that she's uh, political, but she is. Um, uh, thanks for coming <laughs> on the show. Get, get some rest. It looks like, you know, the Democrats, looks, looks like they're having a good night so far, but we'll see what happens uh, later on tonight. Uh, tell your family your I said hello. Your mouth ears. Thank you, Kwame, for the opportunity. I appreciate it. And to all of those that are watching, thanks for voting and thanks for engaging today. Thanks for all the volunteers as well. Uh, they were on the ground and making calls and virtual Zooms, everything over the past couple of weeks. Uh, we hope to have a victory tonight. But again, as a person of faith, um, we put our eyes on, on, on what's coming ahead, regardless of what happens this evening. We just got to keep looking forward. Absolutely. Well, look, once again, hey, stay tuned. We're going to take a commercial. We'll be right back. Uh, if it's always real talk, you know it's going to be real.